so with no further ado, we're going to go on and we'll welcome back Steve Webster um, to um, talk with us about um, uh, monetization within add-ons. In the part of the show, I wanted to call, call script rich quick, but no one liked that. How do you, Steve? <laughs> okay, thank you. Nice try though, right? It's clever. Yes. All right, so let me share a uh, presentation. So I just want to share some of the things that I think might benefit others. Uh, the first sub bullet point there is always offer a free service with high quality and no limitations. In other words, over deliver. Uh, I have seen some add on attempts where they use this freemium um, philosophy where they offer a free component and if you want more features uh, you have to pay for it. However, if that's not done correctly, you're going to get reviews that says bait and switch. It, you can't do anything unless you pay for something. And then at that point, your whole add-on is going to implode on itself. It's going to be a waste of your time. So it's important to um, create a free service, fully featured, high quality, no limitations, and keep supporting that and making it better and better. Okay, And then later, you can come back to add another feature that hopefully is related to that add-on and start introducing premiums. So I'll give a demo about that soon. Um, a design with just a few clicks or even one click. Um, I challenged myself when I designed uh, Remove Blank Rows. I thought, okay, how does uh, Microsoft Excel, how many clicks do they have to do? So I looked into it. I said, can I beat that? You know, can I maybe even do it in one click? So that's one of the things I wanted to share. Challenge yourself with the design. Think about the end user. Make it as simple and streamlined as possible and as clean, of course. Uh, next one is patience. Um, sometimes, at least with me, there's this tendency to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, uh, especially if you're planning to monetize, to make some money. But I've learned that it's best to take your time, let things take its course. Um, and in this case, I'm glad I did because with uh, Remove Blank Rows, for example, uh, I think we're I think it's around 50,000 installs um, on that Chrome store. So that means you have a good base. So then later, maybe a year later, uh, if you want to wait a year, maybe it's six months or three months. But sometime later. Once people are using the free service, it's probably a good time um, to be patient and then introduce those premium features. Uh, customer service, exceed expectations. Um, the other add-on I have, I ended up uh, forming a partnership with a former customer, and it's to send outbound SMS text messages. It's called Text G Blaster. And the example I can share there is, uh, we had a user who sent out, I don't know, I think like 2,000 2, text messages, and there was a flaw in the uh, code in the sense where we didn't expect something. You know, you, you test the heck out of, it, out of it, but there's always something. So in this case, at the end of the text message, uh, they put hyperlink, but we add a suffix to every text message, uh, hyphen, no reply. We don't want people to reply. It's outbound only. Well, if you add a hyphen, no reply to a existing URL, it's going to think the whole link is that, and now the link isn't functional. So um, as an example for a customer service, um, he reported the problem. He left his phone number in the uh, form that we had, which was optional, and I called him, and he was blown away. He couldn't believe that someone called him <laughs> For, for an app personally. So that exceeded his expectation. And to make a long story short, I ended up crediting him all that plus more, and he became like our number two customer for the past year. Collect data in a database or keep it simple? I think it really depends on your add-on. Uh, with TextG Blaster, a um, lot of transactions are going on. Um, so we are leveraging two things, uh, Google Spreadsheet as a simple database and as well as Firebase. However, with Remove Blank Rows, I wanted to challenge myself to keep it minimal, 
right? What is the least amount of work do I need to do to still have it monetized? So in this case, I was leveraging the property service as my simple database, where if it was user specific, I would use the user method of the property service. Okay, how to collect funds, PayPal versus Stripe. So let's move on to the next slide. Uh, you want to leverage third-party services. There's PayPal, Stripe, there may be a few others, but those are the two big ones that I've noticed. Um, I'm currently using uh, PayPal for donations for the free component part. In fact, it was a progress. Before I introduced premium uh, features, all I had was the free component. And then after about two years, I added a donation button. And I am using PayPal to this, to this, uh, at this point in time. But one of the problems I'm concerned about PayPal is the conversion rate from this screen. If they're not using PayPal, they have to go all the way down to this little continue link to enter their credit card number. So that was really troublesome to me. So I decided to move on to Stripe. Now, if you haven't heard of Stripe, you can visit it at stripe.com to learn more. But I get the sense that was designed for the developer first, and then, of course, the consumer uses it, right, your, your customers. So I'm a big fan of Stripe, and this is an example of the screen. It's very simple. Enter your email, credit card number. You can even make it to enter a... Uh, zip code if you want. Uh, you can have the customer, if they want to remember me so they don't have to type as much, they can do that as well, it's purely an option. So when this screen appears, it's you have nothing to do with it. You're not collecting the credit card number, which is something I didn't want to worry about. So Stripe does that service. Um, they charge similar fees as PayPal, and then monies in two days can go to your uh, banking account. All right, so here I have a development copy of my remove blank rows besides the production version. So here is the uh, free version where I've been adding more options to it to make it as best as it can be, in, in my opinion, because I collect feedback from the feedback link down below. And over a period of time, I try to add in those features. Uh, so recently, I've added the... Uh, premium portion, and I decided to do something a little different. Um, with Stripe, you can do subscriptions, but I decided to do it a little different. But in fact, it's very, very much the same as our text G-Blaster um, SMS texting, where I'm going to offer them 50 tries of their premium uh, features. And in other words, I'm not limiting any functionality in the premium features. I'm giving them everything, and you can try it 50 times. And if you like it, then you can uh, fund your account. And then once you you click that button maybe 100 times or what have you, like in this example, then it will automatically prompt you. So let's go ahead and do that example so I can show you what I mean. So let's say I choose one of these premium options. You start off with 50, but in this case, I prepared the demo where I got one left. So let's say um, I will go ahead and run this for the date version here. So in this date, I'm going to hide March 3, 1 to whatever. So it did hide that. And now you'll notice the premium balance has gone to zero. And I'm leveraging property service using the user method for that. So now I'll just click this again and see and watch what happens. It recognizes the premium balance is now zero. And I'm now prompting them to make a choice. How many more uses of this, of, of this do you want to use? So in this case, this can work with not only this particular premium option, but all all future premium options. Again, the free portion is always free, but the premium portion, these can be applied to any of the premium portions. So if I click buy, um, you'll notice that I have test mode. What's nice with Stripe, 
you can actually have a um, like a secret token type of thing for just testing purposes. So that means I can type in some email address, and then they have this reserve card number, a bunch of four twos, and it'll actually process it as if it was uh, a live account. Okay, and if I click pay. It verifies everything. If it's not verified, then uh, the callback will tell me. In this case, everything was verified with that test credit card number. And then based on the callback, the app script is fired, and I upload the balance from zero or change it from zero to whatever they selected, which is 100. And then they can continue on. I've got a question, Steve, to do with the process around um, uh, evaluating add-ons for publishing. Now, when you've got uh, monetization in them, how do you get Google to test it? Google has not tested this. Okay. Uh, so because from my experience, once you introduce a brand new add-on, you go through the vetting and review process. And then the impression I get, Bruce, is randomly they will check future updates. And at this point in time, there hasn't been a review. Okay. So because you initially published it without any monetization, they never yes. tested it then, they haven't tested it afterwards. Right. Okay. That's great. Right. But who's to say in the next update, they may go ahead and randomly say, let's slow down and let's review. Yeah. Steve, this is a commercial question. How, how um, successful do you find the monetization effort so far? Is it rewarding for you financially? Um, well, I just broke a billion dollars. <laughs> No, 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 I haven't gone that far. Um, uh, my philosophy is keep throwing out some monetization uh, add-ons or apps, whatever, because my hope is maybe out of 10 or 15 or 20, one of them may be more viral and more volume and therefore more money. So uh, with my text G Blaster, we have repeat customers um, and... Uh, once a month, my partner and I split the fees 50-50, but we're underneath $1,000 per month profit at this point. But, you know, for just over a year, well, much investment besides sweat equity, it's, it's, it's pretty good. And I just started with Remove Blank Row, so we'll see how that goes. Well, thanks again, Steve. And uh, Steve um, has, has just done an all-nighter, so we, we thank him for staying up for longer. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to sleep now. Okay. Uh.